So I went to um, California Institute of Technology for grad school, and then I went to University of Illinois, where I was a faculty member in Urbana-Champaign, and then I moved to Harvard for a year, and then I moved to MIT, and now I'm a professor of chemical engineering at MIT. And almost every class I've taken, either in undergrad or grad school, I found useful. Sometimes it was 20 years later, but I would eventually find some use for it. I did, I did work pretty hard at Oregon State, and what I've seen over the years is if you look over the years of people I've met that are successful and not successful, it's not correlated to intelligence at all. Very successful people are sometimes not too bright, okay? I've seen um, people on the farm, they'll be much smarter than someone who's a full professor at a top place. And you're like, what, what, you know? So you're going through all the things to say, okay, what was their upbringing? You know, is that really? Well, you go through and you well, this guy's from a farm, this guy's from a rich family. Can't really tell, right? But, very, very motivated. That's the consistent thing you see over and over and over again. So, when I was assistant professor, and I, I took a lot of grad students right away, and I, I had a small startup package to fund them. So I was getting about into my third year, and I was almost out of money. And the cost of students is pretty high. So I was coming up pretty quickly with running out of money. And running out of money is very bad, because assistant professor is on temporary, they're temporary employees for five to seven years, depending on where you are. So I was like, oh, what am I gonna do? Go to industry? What, you know, what am I gonna do? So, but I just kept going and going. And about six months later, I hit two grants. And then I hit another grant, and I had plenty of funding. But in that one time, I seriously considered leaving academia and just going, because in industry, I'd get much better salaries at the time, and you know, there were companies approaching me to become technical managers. And, but I decided if I wasn't gonna, if I, if I bailed out, I would never know. Well, I, when I came in to, uh, to uh, Oregon State, in the first, I didn't really know to, how to equilibrate myself to everyone else yet, because I, you know, I was from high school, I didn't know, and I was from a small town. One thing that I was taught by a guy named Dr. Levenspiel uh, in chemical engineering, and he did this thing to me that I was not too happy about at the time. And what it was is I had gotten an exam completely right, except in one little section, I had made a factor of two error. And then I caught it right before I turned it in. So I went to the end of the problem and I corrected the factor too. So I put it back in, so I got the right answer. I turned it in and he only gave me half credit on the assignment. So he marked off half the credit. Even though I had the right answer, all the things was there. You could see the factor two that was entered, you know, so everything was fine. And I, I was like, wait a minute, half, half off? Right, that's pretty rough, right? And he had an attitude at the time that if you made almost any mistake, usually it was zero. Even if you had like 50 steps right, you got one wrong, it was off. And the thing is, is that's not, that was very, very good. You know, because, because when you do something in engineering, and if you make one mistake, the penalty is huge. Because it could be a fa you know, factory near someone's home, it could be a bridge, it could be whatever. And so that training that they had at Oregon State at that time of getting it right, you know, that was, I mean, that's great. You know, I publish a lot of things and I get it right. And other people, you know, it's much easier if you build things where you keep getting things right. Then you can keep building and building and building. But if you make mistakes somewhere and you build on a bunch of mistakes, it can sort of kill all the work afterwards to not be that useful.